All right, welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Super Dawn. You know that the issue basically um, uh, in the country right now is the issue of uh, the party primaries. As you know, stated by INEC, all parties must conclude their primaries as of October 7th. And most of the all of the parties, I believe, have concluded their primaries and have, and have their candidates, you know, uh, which emerge from the primaries. But the question is, conclusion of the party primaries, you know, after the conclusion of the party primaries, what next? And that's what we're looking at this morning on the program, conclusion of party primaries, what next? And to help us have this conversation, we have a leadership expert and a public affairs analyst, Maxine Midoye. Thank you so much for coming on God the program. bless you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. But just let me ask you first. Um, let's look at the issue the issues of the primaries, first of all. What's your opinion on, on, on the... The, the conduct of the party primaries across, across all political parties so far? Well, it has been fantastic. It's, it's a lot of uh, uh, experience, a lot of intrigues, a lot of quality thinking. And that is what is expected of a politician uh, and a party. You don't expect the primary to be rank or free, but uh, with the way it was, I really want to congratulate Nigerians, especially the way they conduct themselves throughout the primary. We've not heard of serious security concern. Um, in, in some states, like Delta State, we, we, there were lots of lives. Even um, there was a, there were toddlers involved. Toddlers involved who were like who were you know innocent citizens, you know, going on their own, be also involved in in that. I mean, would you still be congratulating Nigerians after that? Uh, you see. People are expecting a perfect system. There is no perfect system in the world. Yes, it's regrettable that we had some minor incident like that where people, we, which led to loss of life thereabout. But then, generally, I don't want to say the primary election has, been, uh, has not been eventful. But at the same time, to me, personally, the way I is, See, I view things, it has not been what we can call crisis reading primary, you understand? Because though we have minor issues here and there, but it has been generally peaceful. When you compare this to the 2015 primaries, if, if you have you know, um, any memory of that, what, what, what would you say? Would you say this is better or the 2015 was better? The 2015 primary, if we That's look at in yeah, 2014 primary, if you look at it vis-a-vis -vis political parties, you will see that I can say that 2014 primary in those political parties were better than what we had now. Yes, because we had APC primary, well televised, peaceful, the incumbent president now emerged at that time and then it was peaceful to some extent. The same thing, PDP primary, uh, former president Goodluck Jonathan was adopted under a peaceful atmosphere and the election went ahead still under a very peaceful atmosphere. The opposition won and uh, it was celebrated all over the world. So I think compared to what we had now, we are seeing a lot of intrigues as a result of desperation of politicians, the governors, the senators, and also uh, Nigerians generally, uh -huh. because the country is like tensed. Everybody wants to see uh, what is going to what is going to be new in our political system. So everybody, the level of involvement also in, increased compared to what we had in the. In 2014, you see the youth now coming out and say they want to participate and uh, the awareness is very high all across the country. So this has led to a lot of uh, 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 interesting uh, conversations coming up on the political uh, well, What do you think scene. is the reason for this um, increase yeah. in, in participation and engagement? Uh, increase in participation and engagement, uh, of course, there are so many factors that we can allude to that, that uh, one, the level, of, the, 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 the level of poverty in the land, unemployment, two, people see government as a way of 
getting themselves something to do. You understand? Getting employed and having something to, 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 to do. And the youth also, looking at the past uh, adventures, we've seen that prior to this time, it has al always been like the youth at the background. They were not hard. They just participate, vote, and uh, just go home like that and then wait for whatever that is going to happen. But today you see that the youth are coming up to participate. What has led to that is increase in level of awareness. I want to also say that around the world, it is something that is uh, general. Like you see, youth are becoming more conscious globally about politics, about their life, about their future. I think that has also contributed to the, the, the the, the, the involvement and the level of uh, uh, conversation that is presently going on in the political uh, arena. Apart from youth, we're also seeing women participation. Um, recently, we saw Obia Zekwesili saying she wants to go for the highest office in the land, which is the office you know, of the president. Um, um, do you see this changing, you know, being a game changer? Is this, is this, is this the 2019, the year where we see that, you know, the game changes? Are we going to see a youth become the president or, or um, the, the woman become the, the, the president? <laughs> you see, women and youth coming out to participate in politics is normal and it's fantastic for our system. But uh, saying that that is going to be a game changer or improve the system or I, I, that I'm not a, a soothsayer. I can forecast the future, but at the same time, I can look at our social, economic and political uh, uh, processes that one, we have major issues bordering our system. The government we practice here, we have a lot of sociocultural issues. We have a lot of uh, national challenges. Do I call them challenges because they are surmountable. You understand? They, they, they have solutions. It's just that we've not been able to, to actually address it. And then the women, whether we have women president or youth president, is going, it's not going to change anything if those social political issues are not addressed. What are those social political those issues? Those social political issues are one. I want to say, being a leadership expert, I discover over time that in this part of the world, we are uh, wrongly educated. You understand? We are miseducated. Our education system is faulty. The curriculum that produces us, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm, I'm including myself now. Sorry, but, I, I just want to uh, okay. pause that for just to let our viewers know that you can call in um, the numbers to call and on, on the screen you can call in to make your contribution and let us know what you think about the, the current climb, the political climb in the country. And then now that the party primaries have been concluded, what next? What do you want to see next? So call us and let, let us know, give us your contribution. Please go ahead. The curriculum that produces us is fourth curriculum. We were taught how to go to school, get good grades, and look for a job. We were taught to hate ourselves, to devalue ourselves. We were not taught to love ourselves. We were not taught to be able to use our hands to help our nation. We were taught to be subordinate. Read my leaf. I said subordinate. Subordinate meaning that we are so less than ordinary. And we still use those languages in our offices today. It's my subordinate. Meaning that that person is less than ordinary. Those, those things are not dignifying. We are not taught how to add value. We were devalued with our education system. They, test your, they said they test your IQ. Whether they use the grade to test your IQ and say this one, you, you, you have the A's, you have the B's and all those stuff. Forgetting that nobody, no human being can measure human intelligence. We are very, very special human beings. We can make our society work. Okay. They're different between the education that we inherited and the structure that we inherited and that of 
the people that gave us this structure is that if you see the way they treat themselves with so much respect, with so much love, they value themselves. You see them exhibiting love for their country. You can hardly see them doing something against their country. But that is not the case we have here in our country or in the, in the, in the African and less developed country. Because we have refused to evolve our own system that we place value upon human beings, upon the way we look ourselves, upon the way we treat ourselves. All right, sorry, Hello. we have a call from Oyekomi calling from Wishing. Good morning, Oyekomi. Good morning. Good morning. I want to call, I want to actually have a commend your special for this uh, enlightenment program. Thank you. As part of my own contribution towards this program, our legislator in this country, both House of Rep and Senators, in as far as they don't have the same mindset with the president or the executive in power, things cannot move in this country. We don't continue to in ourselves. A situation where some legislators have their own different views and the president has it, cannot help the situation. So please, use your forum to educate our politicians and the politicians in general that they have to have the same mindset in order to work out a policy or law that nobody will be free from. Right. Otherwise, we will not move any, make any move in this country. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, Oyekomi, for, for, for calling in. Um, he, he made some points about having coercion between the, 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 the executive and the legislature. Uh, yeah, very important. But before that will happen, we need to have a visionary leader, a leader that live and work that vision, because all that I've been saying since, what, 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 is going to, what all is going to culminate telling to is good leadership. A leadership that has vision, because leadership is out to give direction. And that direction is going to create a culture, a political culture. It's going to evolve a culture. Once, and you think that's what has been lacking so that's far? What leadership been lacking. Without direction. That's what has been lacking in our country. If we have a leadership that give us duration, maybe we have strategic plan, long range, and I mean short time and long time plan that, uh, that our vision encapsulates. Every human being, every citizen of this country will know this vision. Right from primary school, we inculcate and internalize it that this is the vision of Nigeria. Do we have national vision? Now you see people driving self, selfish agenda because they just want to be, in, probably you just want to continue to be relevant in government. We note that you are leading us towards a goal. Goal are achievable if it is set. If leaders can set vision, look at some organization for instance, they start with just maybe a small office and grow to become a conglomerate, controlling shares, big, Countries and you know they, 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 they distribute their companies and people are benefiting immensely from it. This is what leadership is all about. This is what vision is all about. And we can replicate that. That can be replicated. And we have seen it being replicated in different nations. Like uh, Nigeria used to compare themselves with Singapore. They used to compare themselves with Malaysia. They used to compare with themselves with Britain, America. This is a function of leadership and vision. Okay, l let me ask you, because now the, the, the party, parties have concluded the party, their primaries. Yeah. When you look at how the, 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 the primaries were conducted and then the kind of candidates that emerged, does that give you hope for you know, a new Nigeria when you look at all of these candidates? The candidates that, that uh, emerges from primaries are Nigerians who benefited, who had the same mentality, who benefited from a faulty curriculum, faulty educational system, and also uh, 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 they have what I call inherent dysfunctionalism in them. So what do you expect? You see, I, I said something that we need to have a national agenda, a national issue, a priority. This system, except the House of uh, Rep and Senate, come together with the executive rider, I mean with the executive, and formulate policies. 
that will encapsulate national vision, that will now make it difficult for people to pursue selfish agenda that inhibits national growth and also encourages this chaos we're having in our system. If you don't remove this chaos, and if you like, go and bring a president from, we've seen them bringing people from diaspora to come and be minister in Nigeria and all those. If you like, go and, go and uh, borrow president or borrow somebody from US or get somebody to come ahead our, our government here. It's not going to work. Our system is, is highly polluted and controversial. It's highly dysfunctional. We need people, we need leaders who can understand this uh, uh, dysfunctionalism in our system and address it squarely. We need people who have the political will to do something differently. So even with the people you kind of people have emerged so far in the premise, you're saying there is still no hope for 2019? You say, I'm not saying that there's no hope for this country. There is always hope, so long as individuals are concerned. Human beings are subject to, to change. We can change. We can make things work. Nigerian challenges are surmountable. But all I'm saying is that until we have that leader, until we have that leadership, who under, you know, if the first thing is for you to understand that there is, there are challenges before you can go ahead to provide solution. If you don't believe there are challenges, there is no uh, uh, solution you are going to come out with because ordinarily you don't believe that there are challenges. If you believe that this system is working, if you are a leader and you are coming on board to govern, I mean, to lead this country, lead this society, and you don't see problems that you are coming to solve within two, three, four years, then you're not going to solve anything. You're not going to lead us to anywhere. It's going to be the, just to maintain the status quo and the problem remain. To me, I discovered that we have grave challenges that leadership, we're supposed to be the essence of our leadership for now. And if you are coming on, on, on board, I want to see your political program. I want to see those problems that you've been able to identify, like the challenges of unemployment, the challenges of our resources, the challenges of, 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 of culture. We have cultural challenges. We have religious challenges. We have challenges of indiscipline, impunity. You must understand these challenges and provide solutions. Look at how many thousands of graduates that are being turned out on a, on, on a yearly basis in Nigeria. We have a call from uh, Oladi Meiji. Oladi Meiji from Ikeja. Good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning, Oladi Meiji. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think there is a, there are network issues there. Do yeah. call us back just to make your contribution. I was going to ask you, you know, just before that call came in, when you look at the INEC has now set November 18 as a deadline, sorry, as the com a commencement date for the campaign. campaign yeah. um, what do Nigerians be focusing on as electorates? What, what should we be focusing on? We should be expecting from the aspirants, their manifestos, workable, practical, manifestos. Nigerians should be looking out for concrete solutions, manifestos that address our social political challenges. And it has to be strategic. You give us time frame and it has to be workable, something that will be achievable within three years, two years, ten. Because if you set goals, for instance in an organization, if, when, we, when we train leaders, we, we ask them to set goals, set long, short time goals and long time goals. And these goals must be achievable within those period of time. You must have all your plan ready. It's practical. Leadership is not, it's not, it's not, it's not building, it's not just uh, something that is not uh, assailable. It's something that you can, you can do practically when you have the, the, the capacity. To, to, to deliver, and then when you have what it takes, the, the, the ingenuity, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that it takes to address challenges. We are all created to solve problems. What kind of questions should we be asking? Because really, it, it's one thing to say, oh, um, listen to their manifestos. Yes. We've had a lot of manifestos. We must interrogate country. those manifestos. So what kind of questions should we be asking? The question we need to ask from them, how and when are you going to 
deliver. How do you deliver these manifestos? Let, this be, let, let it be practical. Last election, you saw APC, they brought out some Victoria. We have a call from okay. Matthew, Matthew from Mushin. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, hello. Hello, good morning, Matthew. Ah, I can hear you. Hello. Hello, can good you hear morning. Me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. From um, all the candidates emerge, they are better of the same page. I don't see no page yet. So I'm um, expect the same results, even next year, for the past, for the next four years. They are better of the same page. They have said articles before, even the current president, they have said them before, they have known what they can do. They are better of uh, the same page. And the man sitting there has said this all. So God will help us in this country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Um, he's saying, look, from the way he sounds, it sounds like there is no hope for, for 2019. I mean, if this, if what should, how, this is, is this how Nigerians will be feeling at this moment? What should we be doing? You know, I have said it that I am a, I am a very optimistic person because I believe there, is, there, there are solutions to our challenges. There are no problems. All what we had is challenges. We, I believe there are two solutions. And uh, leadership is key to solving this problem. Now, I believe that we have credible Nigerians among those people that have probably contested mm -hmm. this election. And, uh, but what we want to see is not enough to just talk about your name or, or where you come from. No, that is not what we need at this point in time. We need practical solution to our problems. We need manifestos that address it, and we need to ask questions. How do you want to do this? That's what Nigerians failed to ask in the last election, when people brought out Victoria uh, diagram on TV, and we were seeing it, cal calculations and others. But Nigerians refused to ask, how, when, do we begin to see this result? Because, if, and secondly, and I want to say that Nigeria are too dogmatic. We are too complacent. Nations that move this world are not complacent. Even at, at their level of development, they are still not complacent. Why are we complacent? We are so satisfied with mediocrity and we are complaining. Nigerians are complaining. I don't like it. We should see actions. We should see uh, citizens forum calling these people to question. We have a lot of educated people. That is why sometimes I used to have problem with education, the kind of education that we got. This, uh, this wrong educational system that, that, that gave us uh, no value, that devalue us as human beings, that we have to look up at somebody as somebody who provide everything for us. This is the kind of education that we got. They, they make all of us susceptible and, uh, uh, to, to government, that government has to employ all of us. Without them, we can't live. Now, when the government shut their door, the whole society is miserable. What kind of education is this? These are the things that I want the leaders to come out to solve. It's not enough yeah, to be producing yeah. graduates and just abandon them. This is because waste. Of time, oh, Mr. Martin, because of our okay. time, Finally, let me ask you, what would you want, because you're, you're speaking on the office from, you know, somebody will call it the office of the citizen. Yeah. You're saying that electorates also have a role to play in terms of seeing Nigeria move forward, yeah. you know, in, for the 2019 general elections. What role do we have to play? Enlighten the citizens right now. What can they do to ensure that this country moves forward, you know, from, from 2019? Okay, we have two, uh, we have two bigger parties and we have other smaller parties. We have credible Nigeria that come out in other smaller parties, educated, exposed, and people with different psych. Why can't Nigerian citizens align themselves appropriately? Interrogate these personalities. We need character to take this nation forward, to move this nation forward. Why can't Nigeria, I'm expecting the youth to interrogate, to go into interesting conversation that borders on personal interrogation, trying to assume their personality and character, and what they can do, what, what these people stand out for. Then use the social media to probably publicize those people that they know that can really make a change. Well, their characters are not hidden. Intelligent itself is not a hidden thing. When somebody has wisdom, you will know that this person has what it takes to yeah. lead us. You know that this person only has money, right. this person does have the character, this one, this is a citizen, these things, these informations okay. are. 
uh, at the thank, domain thank of the citizen. Thank you so much, Mr. Maxine, for coming on the program. We'll be speaking to Maxine Midoye, who is a leadership expert and a political affairs analyst. Thank you so much for coming on the program. It's my pleasure. It's been great to have you. It's we'll take pleasure. a break now, and when we return, we'll be rounding off on Super Dawn. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks uh, for staying with us. It's been a great conversation here on Super Dawn as we looked at, you know, a conclusion of party primaries, what next? Our guests have talked so much about the, the, the importance that education plays, the role that education plays, and also the office of the electorate. As the electorate has asked us to get involved, and the easiest way to get involved is to go get to your PVC, engage the candidates, ask them questions, and then when they tell you what they are going to do, ask them how they are going to do it. Um, I, do, I don't think, think that everyone is totally bad. I, I, I believe that they are candidates who are credible. And we need to find them out and then, you know, engage all of these candidates. But that's the much we can take on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. And for those who called in, thank you so much. But I am, I, we would again be back here tomorrow to continue our conversation on national issues. I am Precious Amayu. Thanks for watching.